Although Russia, unlike its neighbors, uh, has never seriously considered the question of joining the European institutions, the very idea of Europe was an, uh, as an obviously more progressive and successful community influences the political process very much. Changes in the global scene, uh, the loss of the Euro-Atlantic region's central position in the global system, and above all, the conceptual crisis uh, of European integration, the way it has existed until now, remove the European choice, the perspective of entering the European institutions, at least at some remote date, from the list of practical opportunities for the post-Soviet states. The seemingly inevitable institutional, social, political, and ideological transformation of the European Union means that the behavior of collective Europe as a regional actor will undergo major changes, and this creates completely different framework uh, conditions for the post-Soviet states and Russia. Uh, EU's failure to become a global political player affects uh, its regional role as well. The real interest in the frontier regions and the willingness to spend any major political and financial resources on them have sharply diminished. The apparent right-wing, uh, rightward shift in public sentiment in Europe, which has manifested itself in elections in virtually all countries, is by no means conductive to the revival of interest of the European periphery, let alone support for EU enlargement. In the old world, protectionist tendencies in the broadest sense have been gradually gaining the upper hand. Voters are concerned about the wave of change that globalization brings with it. They instinctively take a defensive stance. They seek to protect the socio-economic, cultural and political status quo, which in the current in international situation is uh, simply impossible. As it loses the role of leading international force, and even the central scene of world politics, Europe still can generate turmoil on the global scale, and this sudden awareness may mess up the customary image and self-perception of modern Europe. And this is, uh, by and large, no default of Greece, but the, uh, the, by the consequence of an unprecedented and, as it has turned out, a risky historical experiment, the major European states uh, have uh, their stage being uh, unable or unwilling to enforce their own set of rules on themselves. The critical moment in the development of the EU coincided with, on the one hand, the European water fatigue and boredom or the problems of unification, and on the other, over weak political leadership in many key countries of the old world. And it is against this background that the authorities need to take urgent and very unpopular decisions, and their voters are increasingly unwilling to accept change. Uh, lack of strategic thinking in the West, which gradually aggravated since the victorious end of the Cold War, turns now into real trouble, as vacuum of leadership and political commitment will be filled by other actors, more disciplined and motivated than confused Western countries. Russia is going through a difficult transformation and changed a lot in the last 20 years, uh, although sometimes we feel very discouraged by setbacks. But the way back is not an option anymore. Uh, and if we count down unrealistic expectations we had 20 years ago uh, about possible speed and volume of Russian metamorphosis, uh, we have to admit that development is quite logic and natural, unfortunately. Uh, in countries with such a huge inertia, restoration is a normal part of any uh, course, any process of change. Uh, and this is a, an element of development which then generates new phase of uh, transformation. Uh, maybe France is the most relevant parallel to Russian uh, development. I mean, French history in the last 200, to almost 300 years. Uh, which is worrying uh, now is that uh, 
Russian future and inevitable democratic recovery of Russia, which I'm absolutely sure uh, will happen, uh, will coincide with the, uh, the backdrop of European decline. Looking from the outside of European affairs, I can identify a big threat uh, to our country. Europe, which is living through difficult times, can opt for a frankly mercantile line. The post-Soviet space will be of interest to European countries only in terms of benefits and advantages they can uh, get there, be it uh, a market for, job, uh, for goods, a target for profitable investment, uh, to the extent this is possible in the murky post-Soviet investment climate, or a source of raw materials. In this sense, the common values mantra will finally turn into an empty nutshell. The main problem for the development of post-Soviet states in this regard is that the European choice disappears even as a common reference point. It is unclear to what extent the post-Soviet countries, including Russia, are capable of generating impulses for modernization on their own, without external driving forces, of which Europe has traditionally been one. In contrast to Central Europe, the former post-Soviet countries have never been very good at goal-setting, nor have they had a clear prospect of accession to Western institutions, but they could at least operate with the term European model. The question is whether this term and this model are still available today. For Russia, relations with the EU finally cease to be strategic, ceases to be strategic a purely political element shrinks and they become almost exclusively socio-economic. Renationalization of politics in Europe, which is likely to grow as the influence of the EU central institutions weaken, Moscow can finally get back to the uh, familiar one-on-one -on -one game with individual European countries, uh, especially because we have a range of countries uh, which, which are ready to play this game. Uh, these countries being interested in strengthening their own economic position will tend to seek beneficial agreements, maybe energy deals, maybe something uh, like recent uh, uh, sale of French helicopter carriers, Mistral to, to, to Russia. Given the peculiarities of the Russian business environment, especially that uh, in the big business, which is closely associated with the state, European interests are likely to merely strengthen Russia's corrupt, monopolist-based system rather than to transform it into something else. Europe's possible transformation from a social-political benchmark, which its powerful ability, with its powerful ability to protect uh, the projects of power, uh, into a political introvert immersed in domestic issues and seeking to dissociate itself from the growing external challenges, will create a completely different dynamic in the post-Soviet space. Experience of Baltic states in the past 20 years is very worth to learn because they show commitment and transformation and deep will to change themselves in order to catch up without trying to shift responsibility onto somebody else. This ability is extremely valuable in the new circumstances when major actors are focused on themselves. And I would join what Minister Bild and Minister Lark said. Uh, West Europeans used to didactically urge East Europeans to do their homework in order to fit for European standards. The time is changing. Now it seems that uh, Western Europe has to do its homework in order to be as dynamic as some of East European countries. Thank you very much.